getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Welcome back to the bottom line of 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Clint Scott, Matt Estison, Brendan Riker, Ashley Parton behind the glass as well. Hello, Ashley. Uh, I get this on the Clint Scott personal line. Like two, two things. <laughs> One from Sneed who said he can do 36 and 10 minutes. Thir- the oatmeal cream pie. And says it would hurt, but he could. Which is a lot more pinned down and I, than what I have said. And I put me. the math for it. So I, I don't I just need make make sure, my guy, make sure you got that math down. That is who That's that's a quick pace, man. And I asked this too. Okay, so if figuratively if this were to happen, and now that I've got a number from Sneed, maybe maybe I, I pass it along to him because I have not said I could do thirty six. Three three and th- or sorry, thirty six and ten minutes is a little over three a minute. So you, we dropped yours to 25 seconds. He'd be having to put these down roughly in 20 seconds with the next one going in. And, and if we were to do this, oh. I think we would have to do the fair thing. And, I mean, it's not like it's not like lock and key to get those things out, right? It's just paper. But you should go ahead and, you know, take them out of the plastic, right? Mm. You should hot dog competition style it where you stack those puppies on a plate and you just let the competitors roll yeah. into it. You have water and everything's unwrapped. You have oh, 10 minutes. You imagine go. dipping that in the water. I mean, the, the the water dipping, I get I get the concept of why they do that. But for some reason that sounds even worse with an oatmeal cream pie. You don't you don't need to dip the oatmeal cream pie because it for the hot dog it's cuz you have the bread and that, you know, is a little starchy. Oatmeal cream pie, mm. you don't need uh, want to dip it in water now maybe if you like dipped it in milk maybe no you don't oh, want no you don't filling. want to add milk no you don't want nothing filling you want yeah. it to be you want it to slide down and go down as fast as possible i mean all i know is on the chat you are cream pie clint now <laughs> nope i love to eat you are uh we also got J- <laughs> mcguire <laughs> texan said he's walking in walmart now uh should get a couple boxes. Nope, not today. Not today. Unless you're desperately wanting to do this yourself. Well, you never gave me your food, by the way. And Jeff, I, I if, think I have if, changed my answer. If to you're like, listening, go ahead and go ahead and charge those up to Raymar. Oh my gosh. I, I think yeah. we've got to use some. the company card. <laughs> what was Ch- that for? Ch- chips would be another one too that I think that I could excel in. But chips P- would have to be a, the chip. Chips would have to be a weight thing though. Be- sure. You know what I'm saying? Like Sure, you 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 weigh it the family size bag first and probably a couple the the other thing too is that you would have that would be difficult with that is if you're doing the chips right like i my style if it's a time related thing i'm gonna straight up look like the cookie monster and probably well, half just... of what i'm trying to eat is actually getting eaten and the other one just like a buzz saw and it's just wood chips everywhere just dorito shavings flying off the, <laughs> the yeah. dust is like a smoke bomb of orange powder yeah so that would be harder i think for so for mine that's what would be hard is like i think you picked a great item in terms of it's they're all the same right they're all probably you know i'm sure when when the brand makes those those oatmeal they're they're all weighed they're all you know mm-hmm. on a layer or a conveyor belt and they're made mine would be pizza so everything would have to be the exact same but i don't know how many slices i could throw down in 10 minutes i mean if every pizza was the same, and that way the, the the test and the the race, the measurement, however you want to say it, would be equal. What Ooh. if we did pizza rolls? Ooh, oh yeah, pizza rolls or bagel bites. So, but the the extra the the extra tough part of that is is they are fresh out of the oven. So all ten minutes you're going, eat me, eat me. Yeah, I'm a thousand degrees. I'm the surface of the sun. That's pretty much what. Oh, that's, I'm your pizza. That's what that stemmed from. There's, I can't think of too many times, and this is a realistic <laughs> statement. I can't think of too many times that I've been too full to keep eating pizza. It doesn't matter how full mm-hmm. I am. So I think I could throw down. Mm. See again, this. What, what are the stipulations? Is it just cheese? 
No, like this just a base classic form. Pepperoni. Are you doing pepperoni? Yeah, like a one meat. You, are you are you, are you are you like upping the challenge and doing like stuffed crust, or are you doing no. it like thin crust? Oh, thin crust is easy. There's no question. I could throw a large down in ten minutes of thin crust. Um, just your regular old pizza. Just. I think they should combine this. Like you, you do. But pizza you do rolls. The pizza oh eating. my gosh, I could stuff. I could probably eat a bag in ten minutes. Like a, a real a real challenge would be pizza eating competition. Right before like a 5K. <laughs> Why would How you want to see you go? that? How far? Oh, I'm not gonna watch. I just want you to do it. Report back. You go. You do. Report. Clint, I'll do. Clint I'll do the will pizza. Wait if, at the finish line. I'll do the pizza if you do the cream pie, Clint. <laughs> it's not. It's not. No. Brendan's gonna be there like the guy during the 5K where they're waiting at the table with cups of hydration but he's just handing out milk like it's good for you go <laughs> keep going buddy <laughs> you got it I, this is good recovery all i know is sneed <laughs> said he could do 36. 36 i've got i've got you pegged for two boxes i would enter if you guys will commit mm. i will do the challenge with y'all and we'll have a 10 minute race off <laughs> of oatmeal cream pies and see, then i will literally go happens. puke 36 was just that was a strong that's a strong number it's a bold move cotton yeah well because see but you can't you can't up chuck it right that's part of it yeah you have to keep i think you have to i, I don't know the exact rules i don't either but i think we can make up our own though 36 is a lot that's a lot that's and a lot 10 that's minutes really heavy 10 times three that's 30 so like i said you're having to find somewhere you just to say 10 times three that's 30 well i'm doing it well no but in my head like even, I have a calculator over here. For yeah, you. yeah. Now, you, you've got to find somewhere, Sneed, to put the other six to get the 36. <laughs> Three a minute is tough. Mm. We've spent too much time talking we about We got this on the chat us. line. You can hit us up there as well. Uh, DraftKings was over. Uh, the over-under was 71 and a half, so he went <laughs> under. Yeah, didn't he? Like His own record's like 73. Again, just... Astounding records that didn't need to be set, but I'm glad that have been. And what like, did that's he do the this number. year? What did he do this year? I think it was 62. Oh, he's Just on the decline. Measly, yeah, yeah, he's on the backside <laughs> of his career. I love the story of him because he was like a construction manager or something like that, and <laughs> now he's pulling in like. I was just curious because again, he is he is one of one. He is the goat of food eating at this point. Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was just like, how much does he make? Because with him, it's not just like the $10,000 prizes or whatever, where he's just roaming the country looking for these food challenges. He's also the only one that you can kind of market and you go, Oh, that's Joey Chestnut. I'm shocked that the, like the food network hadn't partnered with him, like to do something like just, you know, like different random challenges throughout the U S or something. Mm -hmm. something right. cool. Maybe they have, I don't know. Do you think he eats hot dogs on the year? Like. Throughout the year, or is it just a oh, one-time thing? Well, he's thing? got to for training, right? You do that <laughs> once, but it's muscle memory. It's Friday, honey. Right? Fire up the grill. Thirty-seven well, hot dogs. It's, it's like if you're if you're a shot putter, you're not going to go out and just do sprints every single day, right? There's going to be some throwing in there. So if you're going in for a hot dog competition, I don't think you'd be like, I don't know, noodle form. But it's something. just calorie count, right? Like that you would probably practice. Like I, I get it. You would have to, but I don't know. Maybe. You're asking a world that I, I don't live in or comprehend. I would. I say I would love to. That just seems like you'd get miserable. It seems like you the joy of eating would leave. I think it would really just quickly tear your stomach up, man. right? And I I wouldn't think you'd want to eat another hot dog again in your life after doing something that traumatic to your stomach. Well, he's in the off season now. He's got no more hot dogs for a while. <laughs> <laughs> again, not in that world. How do we know it's the off season, right? Just because he went past like the Super Bowl version? Yeah, he could be ramping it up. Right. This could be the start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot like tennis. I just kind of know when the majors are. Couldn't really tell you when the uh cause they don't really have an off season in tennis. They just play pretty much year round. But when's the slowdown period for food eaters? By the way, Joey Chestnut pulls around like 500,000 a year, but some of that's with again, advertising. My wife just said a large pizza in 10 minutes, huh? I think I could. I think you could. Just a large pizza in 10 minutes? My only knock is sometimes I don't like to eat the crust, but I, I, obviously in that challenge, you'd have to you'd have to eat it all. you got to go all in. 
Oh, this is my Everest, finishing this crust. I think I'll need all the pizza first and then, and then get all eight pieces of crust. Mm. I don't know. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's the Bottom Line on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. I'm Clint Scott, Matt Estison, Brendan Riker, Ashley Parton. Both behind the glass, taking care of us. You can hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, questions, reactions. All of that welcome there. Uh, I've got confirmation, by the way, on the uh, Clint Scott chat line. Okay. Sneed has said he will, if you make it an even 30, he'll do it after football season. Which is, a, the problem is it's a long ways away. So yep. a long ways away. Who would sponsor a Clint, a Clint Scott chat line? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of hard passes. I don't want it to be sponsored, too, because that would mean I would have to, you know. Scott's toilet paper. Give out the number. Scott's tots. That's a good, that's a good episode. Uh, this on the chat line. Shelly said, watch Joey Chestnut live this year. Wish I hadn't. Yeah, you don't watch that and go like, that looks appetizing. They're making that look really, really good. I should do that. Uh, Bullfighter uh, put up a, another Wii game for Wii champion Matt Estenson. Funny that Matty Ice doesn't like Slam Ball because I would absolutely own him on this gem of a game. Some NBA jam. Never. Wii version. Never. Uh, Shelly also asked, how do you not say beefaroni Viking? I should have <clears throat> should have seen that coming back around. Uh, please do an on-air challenge. That on the chat line. Wolf Fighter also said, no, sir, I am king on this Sega. There you go. Uh, for your pizza, a little bit of help here. Now, you eat what you like the least first, so crust first, then the rest is what you like, so it's easier to finish off. That's a really good strategy. Well, if if, if I was doing a contest, honestly, I would, I would roll the pizza up anyways. It would all go down at once. I mean, it would be like the whole, you know, where you, you'd roll it, and then you just you just go to town on it. <laughs> yeah, dipping it in the uh, milk as Brennan said. No milk, man. Can't can't terrible. can't f- can't fill yourself up. Uh, Shelly also said he does have his own line of condiments too. Yeah, there you go, Joey Chestnut, <laughs> greatest your, greatest for, athlete of all time. For your pizza, you can dip it in like a Coke or something. Oh. Again, the syrup. Yeah, and you I don't drink water. Those. They use water for a reason. Hey, uh, yesterday, Big Twelve comes out with their preseason all big 12 team and it's not you know first or second team it's just the team uh texas tech you get a couple names on there jaron bradley uh, and jalen hutching so one from both sides of the ball uh, are you uh are you surprised there weren't more are you was surprised that there were two where what were your what was your initial reaction just from a texas tech standpoint that's us <coughs> That's a hard question for me because it's this is similar to pre rankings with all sports, mm-hmm. you know, mainly college football. I don't put a lot of stock in pre rank list. I, that's just how I feel. But to, to see Texas Tech on both sides of the ball, I, I'm good with that. You know, of course, I'd like to see more people on there, but mm-hmm. you know, I think I think Texas had five, which led, and then you had a couple couple schools with four. So I mean, with two is a little underwhelming, but that's okay. Well, and again, it it, it doesn't mean anything but it, it's a great that's it's right. a great honor don't don't get me wrong um yeah every to see those names are, want to see their name on the right and, yeah. and, and what the, the the with preseason awards the word that comes from it is expectations right like this is again from the media standpoint media voting i think two people in the building here voted i think choice and ad voted i don't know if jamie voted But I think just those two. Anyways, now you have, by each one of those names, expectations. Or if you're like like a Kansas who had four on there, where you've seen some projections them to finish like bottom three in the conference, well, you got four people on that roster. You You have the offensive player of the year. Not unanimous, but the offensive player of the year. And so if you go four and eight, 
And you look back, you start to scoff at that, right? You go, what a joke. Like, yeah, three of them on the offensive side. Granted, one's a fullback. Mm-hmm. But three. No. Kansas State. Kansas State, excuse me. It's yeah. Kansas State. Yep, nope, Kansas State. Yeah. But uh, still, you have three from Kansas on the offensive side. Right. And so, so. If, if you, I mean, so suddenly what's the expectation for them? Because they've clearly turned it around, but are we really sitting here expecting them to have because if they at the end of the year if this is the all conference first team at the end of the season or a mix of first and second season, you're looking back and they have as the conference has added numbers and to me I think a tougher schedule for the Jayhawks they have made a step right they didn't just go six and six yeah because they have all these first teams on here so again comes with uh expectations so now you're looking and I I'm not going to put it past them. I think that those are, from Texas Tech, the two of the top five kind of candidates of, if you're predicting at the end of the season who's going to be a first-teamer. I mean, Jalen Hutchings, he's a super senior. He's yep. been there for a while. Jaron Bradley, you were hoping he takes that next step. He showed you everything you wanted in the back half last year from a receiving standpoint. So I think uh, I, I I don't have a qualm with any of it, but I'm no. with you. I'm not overreacting to anything either. No, and and hopefully Bradley. Let, that's the thing is, I mean, he had a good season last year, and he's young. So building off that, I think he finished with just shy of 750 yards. Mm-hmm. So I, I have no no issues with the list. Of course, I'd, like I said, anything that puts more Red Raiders on a list like that, I'm 100 percent support. But mm-hmm. like you said, this is now an expectation list. Yeah, this is where we. You know the voters think that you will will finish based off you know how how well you did last year. So and to your point too, like from from Kansas State standpoint though, it's I know they have four, but hang with me here because one of them's a fullback. How many teams are really using a fullback in the league? And a kick returner. And a kick returner. And you're going, we just just won the conference last year. Like <laughs> we just. Put a small disruption in one of the best seasons you've seen from a Big 12 team by being the only hiccup to TCU. Like, why? I get they lost some on defense, but like your your Will Howard, something like that. This is all of a sudden the billboard material. They went. They didn't even not pick me. They went in state for offensive player of the year and quarterback. How dare they? Philip Brooks, kicker turner of the year. Maybe. Yeah. So. Uh, as you look through the rest of the teams, of course, Texas leads the way, expected, you would think, right? Not a shock. Yeah, with there. five. Um, Quite a few teams, though, had four four in there. I think, what did we say, Kansas State, Kansas, um, TCU, mainly on the defensive side, they had three. Yeah, so, and the only <clears throat> teams not represented, two of the newcomers, with Central Florida and Houston, which mm-hmm. I do think is interesting because, again, it's all individual by uh, position. So of the four, I think Central Florida is the most talented. But, again, a one, maybe a nod of uh, when you look at the media voters, they don't really know much about these teams coming in, right? No. Or, or you're doing also the equal, okay, well, that guy was great in American Athletic competition. Well, and if you, how is that going to convert over to Big Twelve play? If you put any stock or a lot of stock into these, whoever you you know, whichever you choose, I mean, Baylor and Iowa State got the same amount as Cincy and BYU. They all had only one mm-hmm. go in. So yeah. So, anyways, we'll yeah. see. Well, uh, if I if I said lock down one player from each side of the ball to uh, be a first teamer. Who would you pick? I'd pick Bradley still, because I think just Young, the big frame at six five, mm-hmm. I think that he's absolutely going to continue to be a stud. Hmm. Like for me, and probably d- d- Jalen Ford. I would say defensively, Texas. it's 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 easy to go with Jalen Ford, yeah, right? I mean, yeah. unanimous defensive player of the year. I think I would actually go. Uh, to a team in purple and go Cooper BB there for Kansas State. Feels like he is a lock to be a first teamer from an offensive line standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. 
Although hopefully you'll have just a bunch of, you know, red and black. After uh, after <laughs> fifteen and 0 season. Ten two. <laughs> it's bottom line one hundred point seven. The score one hundred seven. The score dot com. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Bottom Line 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Clint Scott, Matt Estison, Brennan Riker behind the glass. Uh, I want to stick with the NFL. Yep. Uh, there's a handful, and you mentioned one of them, that's on this list, a handful of veteran quarterbacks who have some uh, new homes this year. Starts off the list with the with the big fish there, right, with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Aaron and the Jets. Aaron and the Jets. Uh, 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 Aaron and the Jets. Yeah, it just didn't work as well. Almost edited with yeah. you. If you go Sounds like... gross saying it. <laughs> feels gross. Bum, 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 bum. A-Rod and the Jets. I, uh, I'll be honest. Now, I know talking to a, a large fan base, uh, you know, for the Cowboys. So maybe if you, I would be completely fine if you took the Cowboys, Eagles, and 49ers and just smushed them in the AFC, <laughs> and that was the NFL, because the AFC is going to be so interesting this year. One, from just heavily outweighing the NFC with elite quarterback play, um, to to me, just better overall teams. I mean, I've talked about this a lot, especially since the Super Bowl and since the Aaron Rodgers trade. And really, you can go back to the Russell Wilson trade of last year when he came over to the AFC, who, by the way, the last three years is not the Russell Wilson we were talking about, uh, who was either winning a Super Bowl or throwing a pick to Malcolm Butler, but going... You know, yes. let let Russ cook. That Russell Wilson, I don't know if you'll ever get back to him, but still, that conversation started then. And then you had Aaron Rodgers leave. Oh, and also, by the way, then you had Tom Brady retire. And so the the question of top quarterback in the NFC uh, There's no is, is fun in a different way. It's fun in the AFC because you're going to look at all of these young, super talented quarterbacks that look like they're set to lead their franchises. For a decade. Who's the best quarterback in the NFC? <sighs> Matt Stafford, if his elbow doesn't no, fall off? No, Jalen Hurts by a long shot. If 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 Matt Stafford's court elbow's okay, it's 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 Matt Stafford, but mm. that's a big if, and I have... If Jalen Hurts has the same level as he did last year, then it's him? It's Jalen Hurts. There's, there's um, no doubt about that. But again, if you put Jalen Hurts... Over in the AFC, where does he stack up to you? Jalen Hurts in the NFC? Mm -hmm. Or in the AFC, excuse me? That's a list I'd have to write down, but I would put him somewhere probably between the five to seven, maybe. Because this is the tricky part, right? You're going off of one stellar year. And I'm I'm going to make sure that is pinned down stellar year. Does Does he have a year that's similar? Because it seem, it seems could you not make the not argument? impossible. It doesn't seem favorable to say that he's going to have the exact same year. Well, the expectations are high for him now that he's mm-hmm. had that one year. Um, and I'm not so. saying if he does, he's going to just fall into irrelevancy and like, oh, that was a one off. Jalen Hurts is a legitimate NFL quarterback, and you saw what it could be last year. Don't discredit Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins in the NFC. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, the AFC's got got the, got the quarterback, um, got the 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 heavy hitters on the quarterback list. Um, you know who's interesting in that conversation on the NFC? And by the this is where I was going. Aaron Rodgers won. We threw out his name earlier. Is, where does Derek Carr line up for the Saints? Now that was a mess last year at the end. And he was like, "I'll never forgive the Raiders because they made my wife cry." Oh, uh-huh. It's a business. Captain get over Mascara yourself. over yeah. to the <laughs> Saints. Yeah, get over yourself. Um, man, I just think I think since Peyton left and Drew Brees retired, I think the the Saints have just been in an absolute mess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think that Derek Carr is going to get you over the hump. 
I think that's a pretty weak division. You have Carolina mm-hmm. with rookie quarterback. Rookie quarterback. You have the Bucks with Baker Mayfield, who is or Kyle Trask. <laughs> Stop it. Let the competition play out. Yeah. I well, I do think that's a legitimate competition. I'm saying it that way because I don't think it matters. Yeah. For the Bucks, I don't think either one is a win if you're a fan of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I can't imagine one going outright. Woohoo! Baker Mayfield won it, or woohoo! We got Kyle Trask. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that puts them over the hump, though. Yeah, and so Aaron Aaron Rodgers will have a bigger impact than for sure Baker with the Bucks and then Carr with the Saints. And then Jimmy G with the Raiders. I think There's that's up in the air. You. I think that I think Jimmy G can actually compete. He's proven that. Um it's What's just that? injuries that get in his What's, way, man. In, and then when you What's have that a that foot like look like this year, you know? I'm more concerned with Josh Jacobs. When you when you run the ball that much, man, I, I just feel like this next year it could be tough for him. So if if I threw out these names though, Derek Carr, Jimmy G, I'll go, I'll put Baker over Trask slightly, and then Darnold, who we talked about with the 49ers. I'm not gonna put in Aaron Rodgers because if I asked you the question of who you who would buy stock in for next year, the answer would almost have to be Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah. Are we just talking about quarterbacks that went to new teams? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Veterans. Veterans specifically. We're not talking about rookies because then you'd have to put in Stroud and Richardson and maybe Levis. Love at the the Packers has never started a full season. But I I see where you're going. Veterans on new teams. I mean, you would just have to go with Carr, I think, just because. Right. And this is where it starts. And it's not saying that he's all of a sudden gotten better. Since he was there, who's still looking for his uh, first playoff win. But he, he did put up, to his credit, he put up consistent numbers. Now, the other side of this, too, is you're going to a worse division, if you're Derek Carr, from the uh, AFC West to the NFC South. You've got a top 10 defense where, man, I'm, I'm trying to think through his tenure with the Raiders. Did he ha- did he have that ever? And the defense the past two or three years has been just bottom of the league bad, like no help to your quarterback at all. So I'm not saying that on the scale to Kirk Cousins to Patrick Mahomes, all of a sudden, he's even in the middle of that line. But if you're a Vikings fan, would you rather have Cousins or would you rather have Derek Carr? Kirk Cousins. Hmm. I think it's closer comp- conversation than that. I just think that Kirk Cousins is a lot more consistent. Um, there's a reason he he you know he he wins. I'm not saying he wins at all because mm-hmm. he hasn't, but he consistently wins. Um, again, now with with the Vikings, you know Justin Jefferson has a huge part of that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm just not and a car. You fan. add Jordan Addison in there, who you expect to be another young, yes. talented receiver. And if you're looking from Jordan Addison, his standpoint, boy, what what a terrific place to go to, because you already have all the eyes from a receiving standpoint on a top five receiver in the league. Yeah. And if you if you have that kind of ceiling, like you could shine early if you're Jordan Addison. Well, yeah, you're you're you should be essentially playing either a nickel corner or the second corner every game, mm-hmm. right? First one's going to be on Jefferson all the time, depending on, you know, for the most part, that's how it would turn out. <sighs> Something it's, about Kirk Cousins, though. Yeah, it's just, the just, it's well, one, it's my thought that he, you're you're not going to win a Super Bowl with him, you're not going to appear in a Super Bowl with him. Now, the same thing that I've said for the Cowboys all year, though, from the NFC standpoint, to just quick counter-argument to my own thought, if it's not this year, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. Like, you've got the, the knowns, or, or at least the known to me with San Francisco, because that defense is going to carry whoever they have at quarterback. That's a 10-win team regardless of quarterback right now, yeah. if you don't know who the quarterback is. So you know you're, you're going to have to get through them in some way. The Eagles. Do you put Trevor mm. Lawrence over Joe Burrow? No, no. I think I do. No. T-Law. 
No, how? I, I think we're just seeing the, the steps of improvement, man. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I do. I, I like Trevor Lawrence, mm -hmm. man. I think he's a... I like him, too. We 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 disagree vastly <laughs> on that. Give me Trevor the, Lawrence uh, don't have Jamar Chase. Gave, give me the, uh, the Super Bowl appearing Joe Burrow, and if, if Patrick Mahomes wasn't in his way, probably a regular there in the Super Bowl over mm. Trevor Lawrence. Mm. That's interesting. It's about line, 100.7 the score. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. The uh, Mountain Dew liner really doesn't affect you at all, does it? No. And I take drugs from a lot of people. That's, 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 that's really fast. When's the last time you had a pop? Easily over 10 years ago. Wow. You was just drinking beet juice till since then? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Man, I would... My gosh, I'd, I mean... It's probably been closer to 15 years mm. that I've had a any kind of soda or anything like that. Did you have a go-to before then? Before then? Not really a go-to. Before then, I would drink just about any sodas. I mean, I wasn't a huge, like orange crush kind of guy or anything like that but like sprite <laughs> just had one. <laughs> did you yeah well, i hadn't had one in a long time and that's why sprite but. was always good um i enjoyed pepsi and and dr pepper i mean like i said i really didn't have a go-to the, the sprites and seven ups not seven up are, don't don't no all right well and and ginger ale too for that matter and, and ginger ale is the leader in the club i know they're yeah. slightly different but in that vein of drink those are difficult for me because I do enjoy them for the most part. But now I've been so conditioned to if I were to have one right now, I would start thinking that I'm sick because that's the only time I drink them is when I'm sick. Sure. And so I would just like, I would probably just pass out if I drink one right now. Just fall over. Oh, yeah. You're right. I don't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And I liked Mountain Dew, but man, Mountain Dew. Did you drink my Mountain Dew? There was just so much, breath. so much sugar in those things, man. I always say those were the energy drinks before, like Red Bull and them took the stage because they're just loaded with sugar. There is something funny if you go to the gas station and they have their own brand of energy drinks, and it's like, what were you doing before? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the the Nebraska brand energy drink? Like the Corn Huskers? Yes, the the Nebraska Corn Huskers. There's an energy drink made, and I think some of the proceeds go to their football team. But it was one of the more interesting things you'll see out there in the internet sphere. This is like corn water, which really, if you follow the correct steps, that's just whiskey. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not really a type of energy drink you want. Oh, give me your keys. That's your seventeenth energy drink yeah. today. Yeah. No. <laughs> One more hour with us here on the bottom line. You've got seven hundred point seven the score. A one hundred seven the score dot com is where live from the first United Bank studio. You can call us on the Visual Edge IT hotline eight oh six seven seven one zero nine seven three. If you call that number, Brennan will sing you a nursery rhyme that he will make up on the spot in an effort to put you to sleep. Uh, you can also hit us up on the H. Florence Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, questions, reactions. Don't forget, you can take us anywhere with the mobile app brought to you by Happy State Bank. Hey, this came out earlier. Um, not as a... Oh. What? Just got the picture of the energy drink. <laughs> Big corn energy. I saw this picture, but I didn't read anything with it. So th this, is this real? This is real. It's real. That sounds disgusting. Uh, this came out earlier. Of course, we had we had the uh, Big Twelve preseason team announced that we've talked about um, today. They came out with the standings for the preseason uh, media poll. And have you seen it yet? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to have you guess who is where then. Uh, Texas. <laughs> Texas is at the top of the list. Not a huge surprise there. Kansas State at second. Again, not a big surprise. 
I'm honestly not surprised that uh, re really you could have shifted around how they have have the top five. Maybe outside of putting hmm. Texas and Kansas State in the top two. Yeah. Three, four, and five with Oklahoma at three. Texas Tech is at four uh, and TCU at fifth. You could have shuffled that kind of three-team deck in the three through five spot, and I just wouldn't have been shocked either way. Mm -hmm. um, Baylor at six. Oklahoma State at seven. The highest-rated newcomer from the preseason, Central Florida. Again, not a... Just major shocker there at 8. Kansas at 9. Iowa State is at 10. BYU at 11. Houston at 12. Cincinnati at 13. So they just kind of sandwiched the other three newcomers there at 11 through 13. And at the very bottom, again, not just where did that come from? Uh, West Virginia at 14. Yeah. Your uh, initial uh, thoughts? No. But it's... it's Again, not much, not much thought on a preseason poll, but that's about what I would expect. I mean, I think you're right. I think three through five. I'm biased. I would have put Tech at number three and put Oklahoma mm -hmm. at number four with TCU five. Um, now Baylor, Oklahoma State six, seven, UCF at eight. Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty accurate. Maybe, maybe switch UCF and in, in Kansas. I would have maybe flip flop them as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. I had him in the order. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't be hating. I was on your corner that time. Um, yeah. I, I would have probably moved Kansas up to to, to eight. Um, yeah, the, the ones that, like... But West Virginia, yes. Houston, Cincinnati. It's down there at the bottom. The surprising one to me was, is I think B, BYU has potential to maybe jump up, you know, three or four spots and maybe end around the six or seven mark. Yeah, I would definitely mm. have BYU <clears throat> finishing higher than Iowa State. I don't know if I'd have them finish. I just think they have the potential to jump, make the biggest jump, I think, when the end of the season starts. I it, it, Like if I, you know, playing the game that we did with the individual players, if you're doing that same one here, if you went, this is how, you know, this team will be in this exact spot after the season's played out. My winner is West Virginia. I think they'll be the worst in the conference. <laughs> I do. And and oh, sent, uh, you think they'll I I think West Virginia will be looking for a new coach in the top third of the, of the season. I think it's going to go that poorly for them. Yeah. Um I I don't believe in whatever quarterback they're going to throw out. They don't have the same receivers even that they did uh last year. The de defensive linemen that have rolled through there are gone. I just don't show me the strength of West Virginia football. Trick question. There's not one. I can't. <laughs> um, and so if I was putting money on one that they would be in that exact same spot, it would be West Virginia there at the bottom. But I, I, I don't see anything as I look at this that's just completely off the wall or unexpected from how I thought they would vote. Again, this is not exactly my entire 1 through 14 of how I see the league, because I agree. I think uh, Oklahoma, for me, would get bumped down a couple spots to start out. I think I would put them at five. Um, that's just it. And again, this is expectation because it can't be as bad as it was for their standards as it was last year, right? Year two Venables, the defense can't be as out of sorts as they were. I think Dylan Gabriel is actually a fairly underrated quarterback uh, in the conference. I mean, you can ask how much he meant to them. When he wasn't there against Texas, and they had General Booty or whoever it was as their quarterback, and they were getting the doors blown off by the Longhorns, but yeah, nothing just outrageously shocking. But as far as Texas Tech standpoint, I mean, again, the respect is there. Ten two. Ooh, just a little bit. There it is. There's background, Brendan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's great at background vocals. That's why we have him here. It's bottom line 100.7, the score of 107score.com. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7, the score. It's the bottom line 100.7, the score, and 107score.com. It's uh, man, it's your favorite part of the day. Because you get the chance to tell me that I am wrong. You're wrong! The, I was the, wrong! The, I'm not saying I'm wrong. 
Uh, your tell me I'm wrong statement of the day uh, is I was robbed and take versus take. Shouldn't have won, but I should have at least you gotten a point. You are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let me finish it, Brennan. Come on, Brennan Riker behind the glass. Hitting all the buttons back there. All of them. All of them. The, uh, the, the button number back there for Brennan grows do you day feel, in and day out. Do you out. feel cheated? Take versus take today? I mean, do you? I shouldn't have been swept. Okay. Well, you should... hmm. It was kind of one of those moments where you are... I actually... I heard this out loud. Uh, when was... It was within the decade, but probably... I don't know, seven years ago or so, I came to a Tech versus Kansas State football game in the hopes that Kansas State was just going to get wrecked. I mean, just... And and at that point, just starting to be... Because I hadn't been down here that long. Yeah. Like, in invested in Tech sports. It's kind of where that window kind of started. Because it wasn't immediately when I got down, when I got down here. And... Uh, totally showing up just hopes that the Wildcats would just have just tears that day, just be crying uh, off the field and it was the uh, Kansas State versus Tech game where Tech did not have a very fun afternoon uh, it was very ugly uh, kudos to the friend that I went with who took me to the game who was a Tech fan who sat through it all uh, we're leaving <laughs> and I legitimately hear the sentence where it's like, talk. I could tell the conversation, like, because, you, you know, you're, it's just hearing it in passing. So I could tell the conversation they were having of, like, all the different things that kind of added up of what went wrong, what could have went different. The usual stuff you talk yeah. about after a, a win or a loss. But the sentence that I caught was like, hey, we finish a few more of that those drives, and we're right in that game. <laughs> <laughs> so the same thing for me here. If I just scored two more of those points and take versus take, I would have won. So. Yeah. Gosh, you lost a series. Yeah. There you go. That was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard, too. Because I was oh. like, I get it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, it's like in basketball. If I would have just Every, scored 20 more points, we wouldn't have got blown out. Every team on the losing end, their fans are always in the what-if mode. Oh, yeah. If I would have got this call, if I would have finished those drives, if this wouldn't happen, I'm like, That's that, the what-ifs kill me. You lost. Yeah. You lost. That's it. Clock ran out. They had more points than you. You lost. All right. Speaking of basketball, let's go there, shall we? Oh. Um, Red Raider basketball roster filled out. Uh, you you have the known now, right? You've been waiting for this to see what it's going to look like from staff point, from a roster standpoint. Uh, here is your tell me I'm wrong statement of the day. Now I'll explain my thinking behind it. Year one under Grant McCaslin. You should be expected to make the NCAA tournament with the roster that you have. All right, stay with me here. Let's snap over here. I'm with you. First of all, I mean, clear that's that should be the baseline goal with who you are as a program, right? Like that should be the given that you are a tournament team. But I know year one, you have been trying to see what the roster was going to look like. You went through the mess of kind of clearing out some of the weeds. Uh, starting over last year was such a mess. How do you bounce back from that? From the roster side, I love that you got Pop to stay. Really like that you got Washington and Jennings to stay. Uh, I'm excited to actually watch Lindsey, see what you got from the Georgia transfer uh, this year. But players that you've added in the portal, uh, which, by the way, I think is also a good sign as far as future recruiting, whether that be from straight out of high school or a portal, McCaslin was batting a thousand when he got guys here on campus for visits in the portal. Mm -hmm. um, but every single player that you have brought in is a tournament player from last year. Every okay. single player was either a vital piece to a key role for a tournament team. So you have experience up and down uh, in that regard. Now, it's not just like a deep run type tournament team for many of these, but it's there, and I think that goes a long way of knowing how to get there. But, of course, the other side of that is what, like a Chance McMillian. Okay, it's a big jump from Grand Can Canyon to the Big 12. Warren uh, Washington, uh, excuse me, Darian Williams getting my W's 
uh, confused. Darian Williams, that's a big jump from Mountain West to the Big 12. Uh, and you have other questions too, like uh, do you have the same production or senior leadership in year one and the only year they'll be here from a Devin Cambridge or a Warren Washington, which, by the way, Cambridge officially signing today for Red Raider basketball, if you haven't seen that. Uh, from a Joe Toussaint who knows what it takes to play in the Big 12, can you handle what's probably going to be a bigger role than what you were used to last year with West Virginia? Uh, and then from the young players that have stayed here, do you make that natural progression? But I look at who you have there. Now you have size, you have length. It seems, as I throw the remotes around in the studio, <laughs> that who you went out and got, now it's not just like you didn't just get the elite elite out of the portal, but you got some dudes on the roster now. And more important, it seems like who you went out and got is the type of players that fit what McCaslin wants to do uh, on the court. So, matching that with McCaslin, who's had success everywhere he's been, I don't see why this is not a tournament roster. I don't think you're wrong. I think based on how they ended last year, I think that there's nothing but upside. Um, you know, when you talk about some of the players that they they got in the transfer portal, I mean, yeah, you know, the, the biggest loss would be Jalen Tyson. I think everybody was hoping to keep him. Um, but Warren Washington, uh, Toussaint, the the word that comes to mind is gritty. Mm -hmm. when, you know, and, and when you talk about McCaslin and the defense, that's what you want. You want a bunch of switchable players, just gritty, going to get after you, going to hustle for the ball. Um. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I think that, that it should be a postseason next year in, in year one. Because the other side of this, too, is who do we – or you tell me if you think I'm way off base here. I'm also looking around the rest of the Big 12 and how they've reloaded and how they enter. You'll be better than three of the four newcomers, Houston being the outlier there because Houston will most likely compete for a Big 12 championship. West Virginia has like five spots open right now on their roster that they're trying to Plus find. the coaching issues. Plus that the coaching issues uh, that are there. So, I mean, there's four right there. I don't think Oklahoma State got any better. No. So what, what you're trying to compete, again, I don't think this is a, a Big 12 championship roster. I think you are going to be in the tier below that. But, I mean, if you're in a conference that's most likely, especially with the size now, I think you're putting eight in the tournament next year. Just be in the top eight. Just be better than Oklahoma. Be better than those teams that you're supposed to. Yeah, and you're not. You're, you, you hit it right. We're not, we're not saying this is a, a Final Four. But to get in the tournament, I think mm -hmm. absolutely the, the team is there. And, and the uncertainty that we, you know, I wouldn't say uncertainty, but last year with, with Coach Adams, I mean, it's just like every, as the weeks went by, it was just more and more chaos. It was just chaotic, chaotic, chaotic. And I think with McCaslin, you come in with somebody that's won everywhere he's been, you mm -hmm. know, had a great season his last year with North Texas. Um, I'd put us in. Now, I've also seen, this, it hasn't been everywhere in every single fan. I've seen a little bit of an unease with, Okay, the staff that you've put together, either names that you have brought with you, not Ross Hodge, who didn't come with you from North Texas to uh, the Sunrise Christian Academy, hire for the associate coach, which I think is a great connection because, I mean, now you have that link to an academy that puts out NBA, NBA talent. But, hey, can they be a big-time Big 12 staff? And the answer to that is... Well, time's going to tell because this is their first opportunity, right? Like with McCaslin, he's had his toes dipped into the Big 12 with his time at Baylor, mm -hmm. so he knows what it takes to mentally get ready for a super tough conference. Um, and I'm not saying, oh, boy, we should have them on the radar from a staff standpoint uh, because it could go south. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's not known. I think that may be a fair question. But for year one with what you've put together, I think this should be an NCAA tournament team. Yeah. So West, um, West Virginia jumped in at 19 and 15 last year. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely think we're trending right. It's bottom line 100.7 the score. This has been the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 the score. Go to 100-7thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.